love song.
All right, very good. Now we'll cut this out here. Okay, it goes like this. Uh oh. All right. There you so go. So when you score it, bend it down. It fits in with, and then it goes down. Okay, so we'll do now the other. Now score the side that you need to bend yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, that's. to use one two-inch sheet. It's a lot less labor intensive and it actually I think gives you a little bit better seal. Yeah. Now what we'll do here is we want to make sure that this stays adhered to the sheet metal. So we're going to take the silicone caulk and we're going to lift these out. We'll just put them aside. And I know we got some goop in there already, some dust, but that's the way it goes. So we're just going to take it, we're going to put a couple of coats down, uh, fairly liberal. You want about a quarter inch or so of, of caulk line coming in so that uh, it has plenty to stick to. And just kind of do the edges and then maybe one down the middle for good measure. And uh, then you just put it back. This, you, what you want to use is pure 100% silicone. You don't want to use the acrylicized silicone. It doesn't work as well. And uh, then you kind of make sure you get it squished down a little bit so that it's firmly adhering. Silicone will set up in about oh, six to eight hours. If you leave it overnight, that's better. Okay, so we'll do another round of silicone. It's available at Lowe's. Home Depot, All advertising big box stores and even the family hardware stores that are getting harder to find. That are getting harder to find and you better patronize before they go extinct. We'll just uh, work on one more piece to go on top of this and then we'll start working on the side. So we'll take this piece here. Sorry. Oh, I'm an efficiency. Here. Now, what we did last time was we, we uh, scored it as, and we measured it with fat. This time we'll take the pieces we had left over and we'll use them as our template. So where are the pieces that we There's have? There's one behind it. Okay. So we'll do it this, that way. And because we're a little bit long on the last one, or a little bit uh, short, we'll make this one... Oh, this is a uh, good inch on here, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. That's about well, we want it all the way to the corner. So you square it up. Because this has got a factory edge to it, so we'll use the factory edge on the outside. <coughs> so it measures up. Actually, let me flip it over. Okay, we'll use the factory the edge because it's easier to measure on the uh, outside. Then we need um, something to score it with. So. Alright, this is an ordinary squirrel cage blower. Uh, this is a Dayton model provided by Grangers generally. I don't like to advertise, but these guys are the ones where you basically got to get this blower. Uh, the blower, this particular size, is 273 CFM, cubic feet per minute. So, 273 uh, model. Now, this is a good model for a collector this size. Okay. And assuming you're going to run, say, at least 20 feet, maybe 30 of duct, uh, of that 6-inch flexible duct. 
if you run a lot less, you might want to downsize the motor a little bit because if you have too much air coming through, it won't, the temperature won't be warm enough. Uh, the, and it'll cycle on and off all the time. So it's really, the sizing itself of the blower is a little bit of more art than anything because it depends on how many feet of flux duct creates static pressure, how many turns you got in your duct that creates static pressure, all those kind of factors weigh in, and then the airflow of your collector yeah. itself, what, you're what that's right. like. So I just start with this size because it's right in the middle of what you need. And if the, if the thing's cycling on and off during a full uh, sun day when it's relatively nice oh, outside, then uh, it's, it's the blower's too big. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the the inside rim off so that we can prepare it to accept a, a uh, piece of flex duct. And once you've got this rim off, you'll see that, and this is smooth so that the air will flow nicely into the collector, into the... Less uh, turbulence. Yeah, and, and creates a nice smooth airflow. You want turbulence inside the collector, that's the only place you want turbulence. Everything else you want as smooth as possible. As far as the ductwork, is there any advantage of a bigger, wider ductwork versus smaller, tighter? Uh, as far as ductwork goes, you want it to be six inch flexible ductwork for most everything that you're doing. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the key piece like that. Then we're going to take the blower and we're going to put a, um, we're going to put a collar tie on it. And they'll need a part here. I'm sorry, I didn't get this laid out in there. And you'll see that it actually is bigger than the hole. So there's some accommodations you have to make when you're using this. We'll take this, put it up here, put it up. This is a solar air workshop with the Nebraska Solar Energy Society. Here today we're taking a solar air collector that we built previously making a rack yeah, and then we're going to put it on the roof and hook it up to the building. We're at the pizza shop in Benson, actually it's a mobile honey bathroom, but the Benson pizza shop. And we're going to be connecting the ductwork here in a little while so that we can actually bring warm air from the sun to the building. in there too but that is uh, very very nicely done it is snowing
an exhaust for fresh air and that's where I'm flying to I trade street lights for stars A robber for robbing Hot springs for bars And I'm not stopping till I find Side is snow.